Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today we are taking a look at the uh, movie theaters versus streaming to de debate with this article here. Uh, directors criticizing streaming don't understand the theatrical experience. Directors criticizing streaming in favor of the theatrical experience may not actually understand what the theatrical experience is to most people. Now I'm going to come right on out and say this. This is a very, very bold claim to make. So um, let's see if this article truly backs up the claim. Uh, the shift from theaters to streaming has has some directors criticizing the streaming model and home viewing in defense of movie theaters and the big screen, but it only shows how out of touch they are with modern movie view with the modern movie viewing experience. And uh, one of the guys that they bring up here is uh, Christopher Nolan, as you already saw in the in the thumbnail. And uh, one of my longest videos on the uh, on the channel is basically him crying and bitching about HBO Max and. I've already gone over that in, in, in depth. I'm not going to retread over, over old ground. But basically, I make the claim that his, his, you know, Christopher Nolan wanting to release Tenet in theaters probably only strengthened Warner Brothers' decision to release all of their movies on HBO Max for day and date releases. But yet he had the balls to fucking complain uh, about it. Uh, da da da. Theaters have always been the cornerstone of cinema, and while they're not likely to go away entirely, we're in the middle of an industry shift towards streaming, and directors like Christopher Nolan, Denis Villeneuve, and Patty Jenkins criticizing streaming releases need a better understanding of why it's happening if they truly want to support theaters. It's important to note that while the shift to streaming was supercharged by the pandemic, movie theater attendance was already in decline since long before the dawn of streaming. And I've said and I've said this time and time again. If you look at if you if you actually look at the graph of movie theater attendance around 1999 to 2000 is when it started going on a decline and it never fucking recovered. Uh, box office receipts may have been going up due to inflated ticket prices, but theater attendance has been trending downwards with fewer and fewer tickets being sold over the last 20 years. So yes, while COVID didn't help the theaters' problems, it didn't create them. It just exacerbated their current issues. Uh, this decline is due to both a declining quality in the theatrical experience and a constantly improving home viewing experience. Before streaming, video rental stores popularized home movie consumption before it was supercharged by Netflix, and home theater equipment has gone consistently better and cheaper during a time when theaters are getting worse and more expensive. And they're not entirely wrong. You know, nobody is going to make the... Like, back in the VHS days... You could still make the case for wanting to go see a movie in the theater because watching a movie in the theater versus watching a VHS tape, I mean, it's a it's a nine day difference. But watching watching a Blu-ray in your home in your home theater versus going to uh, versus going to a theater like AMC, it's really hard to it's really hard to defend like getting up and going to the theater, especially given the fact that movies now come out like three months after. They come out in theaters, and now that's actually shortened to 45 days now. But um, before I tangent on for too long, uh, let's go into the article's first point here, and that is the theatrical experience isn't the same for everyone. Directors like Nolan Villeneuve and Jenkins have all criticized streaming releases, saying their movies are intended to be consumed on a big screen with big sound, and there's no denying the value of a good theatrical experience with sound and screens that can never be replicated at home. However, that's not the way everyone experiences movies at the theater. In fact, any directors who primarily see movies at big Hollywood premiere events or private IMAX screenings are likely out of touch with the theatrical experience. Many other people are having complaints over talking audience members, phone use, price increases, and a general decline in value have become more common. If everyone had access to the same theatrical experience as Nolan, Villeneuve, and Jenkins, uh, they'd probably prefer that too. Without that, it's no wonder the availability of big budget productions with big name talent on streaming services often with unlimited access for less than the cost of a theater ticket per month, is making many people decide to stay home instead of facing the cost and inconvenience of going to a theater. And the cost of, of big TV screens and good sound systems becoming more affordable, not having to worry about distancing, not having to worry about distracting audience members and other factors like being able to get whatever snacks you want for far cheaper than typical concession prices. Yeah, come to the movie theaters and um and uh pay five dollars for a uh, for a one dollar box of a of a, of cookie dough bites. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Far cheaper than typical concession prices make the home viewing experience competitive to the theatrical experience for some people. And here's the second point that the article goes into. Movie theaters are only a small part of people's relationship with movies. 
Uh, there's also the fact that movie theaters only make up a small part of most people's long-term relationship with their favorite movies. As James Gunn recently correctly pointed out, movies have always lived on TV and now streaming. And we actually chronicled that, that article already. Uh, it's probably up on the platform that you're currently watching this on. If you want to, if you, if you want to go see that argument that James Gunn made about, you know, movies having always lived on TV and now on streaming. Uh, they'll be on the big screen for a few months before heading to home media where a whole audience subset sees it for the first time and it's watched and rewatched and truly becomes in ingrained in movie culture. In fact, some movies designed for the big screen fail to have much of a life after that with movies like Gravity, which I'm going to go ahead, come out and admit this. Gravity was a terrible fucking movie. Let's let's be 100% honest with, with that. That's the that's the movie with um, Sandra Bullock and uh, George Clooney. About like about her like um, I think she's like the astronaut. And she loses like connection, has to make her way back down to Earth. I don't really remember. I only saw it once. I remember being terrible. Um, with movies like Gravity making a strong showing at the box office, but losing a lot of its replay value outside of IMAX 3D. Yes, because it was meant to be more of a visual experience rather than a narrative one. And there, and I also make the same argument for um for the movie Dunkirk. You know, the only reason why I never fell asleep during that movie is because the movie was so fucking loud that it was damn near impossible to, to fall asleep during it. But have I watched Dunkirk since it came out on home video? Hell no. There's there's no reason to. Uh, meanwhile, long held cult favorites like Fight Club can fight can, can flop on the big screen only to become major hits once people discover it on home media. Uh, the same the exact same thing happened with uh, the Shawshank Redemption for those for those of you that don't know that. Uh, theaters used to be where movies would generate a bulk of their revenue, which was especially necessary for big budget blockbusters, but home viewing is where a movie would be cemented as a favorite. Now that streaming revenue is surpassing pre-pandemic box office revenue, movies are able to justify big budgets with straight to streaming releases, meaning theaters no longer have exclusive on no longer have exclusive on big titles, and now the experience itself is all they have to offer, and that's not always a reliable feature. And here's the article's third and final point. And that is how directors can actually support theaters. It's also unfortunate for talented and respected directors like Nolan Villeneuve and Jenkins to criticize to uh, to decide to criticize streaming is the best way to support the theatrical model, especially when streaming is creating more and more opportunities for up and coming filmmakers who might have never been able to make movies if theaters were the only way to monetize them. The approach of the streaming detractors is also a big contrast against someone like George Lucas, who always embraced industry change being one of the first directors to switch to using digital cameras on a blockbuster movie. That happened with um, with uh, uh, The Phantom Menace, um, which is now an industry norm. Lucas always led the charge on making big on making big movies with modest budgets, with Star Wars Revenge of the Sith costing $113 million in 2005, which is approximately $157 million in 2021 dollars, about half the cost of each, of each of Disney's sequel trilogy films. While there will always be debates over the quality of the Star Wars prequels and sequels, even those that prefer Disney's Star Wars sequel trilogy to the prequels, would have a hard time arguing the final products look like they were made for 200% of the budget of the prequels. With the shrunken post-pandemic box office, budget practices like this may be one of the most important ways to ensure big-budget movies can continue to turn a profit on the big screen. Otherwise, big-budget movies may have to surrender the big screen to mid- to mid and low-budget movies in favor of streaming releases, which would be a major blow to the kind of theatrical experience everyone wants to preserve. Lucas also used his influence as a director to push theaters to modernize and improve their projectors and sound systems if they wanted to show his movies, ensuring anyone who saw his movies was getting the theatrical experience he intended, improving the theater-going experience, and avoiding unnecessarily inflated blockbuster movie budgets may be the, may be the best way to save the theatrical experience, whereas simply ridiculing the streaming experience only makes some directors look more out of touch with modern audiences. And they do have a point. The biggest problem with a lot with a lot of these movies is that, you know, now if you want to make a big budget blockbuster, well, it, it's going to cost you two hundred million dollars minimum. And oh, now every single studio with these blockbusters has to make a billion dollars in theatrical revenue just to break even. Let's be 100 percent honest. That was never going to be sustainable in the long run, uh, even even without covid hitting. I think we would be having this conversation in in a, in a few years instead of instead of right now. Let's let's be 100% honest about that. And guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it right here because I think I've gone on as long as I need to go. 
Uh, if you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And uh, if you guys have been following me for long enough, you know I'm terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys uh, next time.